Hey there. So, reckon on Teep. Alas, not literally. Um, I've pretty much just finished uh, building all the geometry and sorting out the collisions with a few little setbacks. Um, so I thought I'd just do a little run through of the map and then if you want to hang around I'll maybe talk about some of the things I've done towards the end process-wise. But here we are at one of the proposed spawns. There are some swallow sounds in the background which will in no way get annoying quickly. Um, <clears throat> so this is the bottom of the old town really. This is where the attackers start, so I'll take you on a guided tour. Uh, this is the main street, uh, going up towards the market. The finished map will not really have interiors, I'm thinking about doing a version that does in the museum, but basically what you see is what you get, it's just not practical or easy to put the interiors in. There might be performance hits and also uh, it's a lot of work, but uh, quite importantly, and it's very hard to do it in a consistent way that doesn't open everything up to interiors or, you know, be frustrating because you don't know what is an interior and what's not an interior. Anyway, and the shops are going to be very tricky to do that. Uh, here's the market and the town hall. Uh, so one of the main shopping streets. So I've not put a lot of effort into that one, it's fair to say. Um, I'm hoping to put some more cover in into this market. It's a bit bare and exposed, though that is also a gameplay choice if you want to make quick progress up towards the top. I've recently made some of the textures a bit more patchy in a way that's finally a bit more pleasing than the standard methods. Um, and here we're coming up to the top of the high street. Everything to the right there is blocked off. That's not where the map is. Uh, and here we are approaching the other spawn I had in mind. So I thought you could maybe start both ends of the map and work your way into the middle. But it depends what the game mode is and what the objectives are. Maybe there'll be mission objectives or just clearing terrorists in a terrorist hunt. That's doable now. Um, so we're starting from the other spawn, going up the other side of the old town, along the coastal road. And there's the chateau, the Picasso Museum, uh, which I thought could be a main objective uh, without needing too much on the interior side. But alas, in real life there's a lot of Picasso stuff to get in there, so I would change what's in there. And there's the port in the distance, lovingly rendered in a shitty texture. This bit of the old town has a lot of little streets sort of going higgledy-piggledy. And uh, that's the main street down there where we started off. And this is the back route into the other spawn. What I might call the lower spawn. Though I suppose they're both low. And here we are back at the start. So let's take a different route. Uh, that's just a dead end. That cuts through to that staircase. If we go up here, and this time take a cut through here. This is in real life a very pretty little square. Uh, for some reason there is a tree missing. I don't know why there's a tree missing. Uh, yeah, funny that. Um, you can go up there. I'm going to just show you around here. This brings you back to the main street. I'm now quite bothered by that missing tree because I don't know why. Um, and this goes back to that coast road through there. And this is one way up. Little back street. Quite tricky to advance up here. There are a few doorways. And the lighting's gone a bit funny. That seems to be a 4.20 thing, I don't know what that was. Um, this is the Rue des Arcs, Arco, the road of the arches, literally. You can see why. And this is, uh, I guess, an iconic bit of Antibes. There's the old cathedral, and that goes back to the market. And up we go to the square, coast road, just a little square there. Uh, and that goes up to the museum. You can't go inside yet, but at some point I might open that up. And then you've got a little passageway down to the market. Another little square there. Um, I've got to do a lot of optimising, and it seems fixing some things, like that missing tree. 
another little dead end. Um, so dead end down there, dead end there, and this brings you out to the top of the main road again. If you go down here, you get back to near the uh, spawn down there. And there's just one other little bit up here. And there's a little bit of a vegetation display. Um, I've got a video on that. Uh, and here we are back down at one of the spawns. So that's an overview. You can stop watching now if you just want to see the map. Um, those swallows, yeah, they will get annoying. <clears throat> um, so I've changed a lot and I've learned a lot since I started building this. Uh, I was making all the buildings as monolithic chunks, single meshes, the roofs are terrible in places. Um, so all the details, the shutters, are all part of the mesh. So if I just find that mesh, which is not a good example because it was done in a hurry. Um, but you see here the mesh contains all the things, has about 20 different materials, but uh, which is bad for draw calls. But it only needs to be drawn once to draw all that uh, block. There are some things that are separate, some things I've now turned into instanced meshes to uh, draw a little bit more efficiently. Um, and as I go towards the bottom, and it does need a lot of optimising, and it's going slow for some reason, maybe my video recording is slowing it down. As I started getting down here, just wanting to finish the damn map, um, I started uh, doing a more modular approach. Because the way the buildings are, I'll come back to that, because the way the buildings are, it's hard to make it modular. So the buildings themselves are a single mesh still. Um, but I've started doing the blinds and the other things as uh, as a single mesh, but the windows, by and large, I'm now just at the end doing as separate modular bits and then turning them into instance meshes and the like. And one thing I've noticed in 4.20, a version of the Unreal Engine, is that the instance meshes uh, aren't working so well in the editor, but when you play, the lighting's fixed again. So I don't know what's going on there, it's a massive pain in there, whatsoever. Um, but it doesn't affect the game, so that's fine. Uh, and the drain pipes, um, I positioned those individually, and this is one example where I've merged them into a single mesh. The light map for that is probably a load of ass, um, but the thing is with that particular material, the dark material, let's see, they are somewhere, because the origin's off. Uh, I'm off the origin for some reason. So hopefully you'll start seeing the actual drain pipes. So each element was a single element and they've been merged together. So that's about 3000 polygons, which is not bad actually, for a lot of round things. Uh, and that's the light map that it made, which is, uh, well, I suppose that's all right. Those are long drain pipes, um, better than light map, would, uh, than light wave would do. Um, and because the way the meshes thing works, it does actually preserve the levels of detail. So there are two LODs. And uh, LOD 0 is that, LOD 1 is... Yeah, it's a reasonable saving. So that's not a big hit at all in rendering to do all the drain pipes in that area. In other areas I haven't yet merged the meshes, but I'll do it probably uh, to keep... to sort of make areas where they're all merged. So that's individual units ready to be merged. These are individual things I've just over the last week or so, maybe two weeks, created lots of uh, modular bits, so the balconies, um, you know, are now positionable. This is fairly obvious to do, generally speaking, um, but I was trying to follow the philosophy of keeping everything in the same mesh. So if I was to do it all again, I would probably um, start with more modular and do merged meshes and uh, instance meshes. The problem with merged meshes, merged meshes, <laughs> merged meshes, is that Unreal does not always do good light maps. Probably because I do not always do good models. Um, but I have now found working on another map that I can, without too much difficulty, export the merged meshes, fix up the light map, and re-import them. 
So that was holding me back before. Another thing that's changed is the inbuilt level of detail creator uh, for the meshes. Um, so taking one example here, um, this has about 17,000 polygons. I can now quite easily say, oh, here's where it's going to go wrong probably, uh, because of reasons. So I want two lots. That's zero. And lot one, which is this one. The interface is a bit confusing. I want to try 30%. And actually, the way I've built this, 30% um, doesn't change the appearance at all, really. So let's change to lot zero. I mean, it's going to be the detail around the windows. When I manually did this, I just took out the hinges altogether. Um, this has pretty much done that. In some ways, you can see how far you can go with it. 20% is probably too far. Well, not really. So, if you're at a distance, screen size of less than, say, 0.8, 20% of the triangles is a, that's nothing to draw. Uh, I defy you to see the difference. So, I'm going to save that off, and I've already just done a massive optimization of my level. So, I'm yet to do that for all these things, but that, um, with those techniques, if I was to do it again, I would do it as I've done it here, where, as I showed you before, I think, um, I do the bare minimum in the single mesh. Things which are indented are easier to do in the mesh. I put holes for the windows, certain kinds of windows, uh, other ones just overlay on top, and uh, that means you have a very small poly count, and also the detail is all of a similar size. So if you've got lines with little hinges, the little bits of the hinges really mess up the, the light map generation um, and they come out looking like arse. But with this, with this stuff all the elements are quite big so the light map is not great but there's less of this small crap and more of just you know the things that need to be in the light map. So uh, I would do it again that way and it would be marginally quicker you know once I've built up my library of bits which did take a little bit of time and I ripped these off the other meshes I'd done already. Um, with this library, the danger is everything gets a bit more samey because it's just too easy just to slap on your basic standard things. Um, <clears throat> variations you tend to shy away from because that involves making new elements and uh, so it does stifle the creativity a bit. But uh, I would do it that way, be able to generate uh, a little more quickly and also if you find that your your balcony is a bit rubbish or you want to thicken up those bars a bit. You just do it in one place and it happens to the whole map. That is to say, until you merge meshes and so on. But um, yeah, so uh, I've done videos on this before where a lot of what I say I would go back on now and say just do it the more usual Unreal Engine way and uh, make it very modular. The trick is what to make modular and how, and that's taking me a bit of time to realize. So these doors, that's a modular piece. Which is nice because then you can do things like, and I haven't done it, but do things like, uh, oh, I have actually, get a sort of more smooth transition, which is a pain to do on mass uh, for doors everywhere. But with the newer doors I've been using, they're going to look a bit better. The light map will work hopefully fine each time, rather than having to tweak the light maps for each door for each mesh. I've slightly rambled, but there we go. That's on tape. Um, needs to be optimised. A few things need to be fixed. Uh, but there you go. Hope you enjoyed.